Now let's talk about the subject itself. First thing to do is, is uh, what is the what is the general description of the subject? What is it? Now the subject teaches students current industry practice to design, develop, and evaluate a software architecture meeting predefined quality characteristics. Um, and they, these are things like um, suitability, uh, security, usability, efficiency, and maintainability. So you get the, the whole thing there. The concepts, the theories and technologies underlying the methods and techniques are introduced and explained as required. So um, we'll teach you the, the, the methods of developing a software architecture progressively. Students will apply industry practices as they have learned to develop an architecture of a business system. So we, we go through pretty much uh, the kind of thing you're likely to be uh, designing in the first uh, first uh, project, I guess. Not something advanced, tricky. Something that's generally okay. Now the learning objectives. This is by the time you finish this subject, what should you know? Okay, by the time you finish this subject, you should be able to describe the factors that affect the architectural context and the requirements, including the stakeholders and their interest, architectural qualities, business requirements, and usage scenarios. One of the big misconceptions of many students is that um, you should just go straight into developing the architecture. You should just start writing diagrams, conceptual diagrams, something like that. And that is so not true. Overwhelmingly, uh, people really need to sit, st stop and understand what the problem is and who the stakeholders are because they change uh, the nature of the solution or the kind of solution that is acceptable to, um, to the, both the stakeholders and you know, your customers. You should be able to develop and refine multiple views of software system architecture based on the conceptual execution and implementation architecture. There are three, uh, some people argue four, uh, different uh, views of a software architecture and they tend to be fairly progressive and we'll go, we'll deal with most of those later. Uh, suffice to say that by the time you get to the finish of this you will be able to understand what each of them are and what they do and how to, how to develop one. You will understand the key issues in choosing and implementing architectural patterns, including um, patterns that suit, say, performance, uh, patterns for testing, uh, security, usability, maintainability, and reliability qualities. There are certain ways of putting an architecture together that work well for some particular characteristics, and you should know about those. You should be able to reason about alternative architectures uh, for the similar um, problem and now this is because um, there is seldom a very clear definitive answer there usually are trade-offs to be made architecture does not have a one best answer it really is a matter of trading uh, trading one particular requirement against another and so you need to be able to reason about different alternative architectures so that you you have ways of saying to your stakeholders which one you recommend and why you recommend it. You should be able to develop a complete software architecture for a proposed solution to a realistic industry problem. Right. Um, I take a certain amount of trouble to go and find industry problems. I do try and engage industry uh, partners to uh, send in problems. And the reason for that is that there is a world of difference between a industry problem that is really is not clear and an academic problem where we can we can set it up and create things um, that make it easy to illustrate what we want but are in the end really unrealistic. Now for the teaching and learning strategy this is where it gets interesting. This subject is taught through facilitated self-learning. Now more about that later. All lectures and related materials are available online and may be viewed at the student's convenience. So we do not have classroom lectures. You don't have to come on campus to listen to me talk. They're all on video. You listen to them whenever you want. However, it is important that you understand the material in order to participate in the tutorials. And again, more on that later. So there are quizzes uh, on each topic that uh, you must attempt before you come to tutorial. 
The students are expected to have studied the tutorial topics in preparation for the tutorials. How can you how can you participate in the tutorials? How can you contribute if you don't know what um, what the topic is about? So you must um, prepare for the tutorials, and uh, I do what I can to ensure that that happens. You should not be able to hide in the corner. Now, during the first half of the term, the tutorials will demonstrate the the general steps in developing an architecture. All right, we'll just go through a general case of an architecture and we will progressively develop one. In the second half of the term, uh, you as groups will go off and develop an architecture for a problem of, uh, of your choosing out of a, a list of potential problems. And uh, that's where I step back and you just go at it. Right. So in that uh, development, um, the, in the tutorials, you'll generally you'll present your work to another group for review um, and they will assess your work and give you feedback on that. As well, the tutors will be in the room and uh, will be able to um, answer questions about it and uh, try to get your project moving along. Now, some administrative matters. Uh, I must warn you that plagiarism is not tolerated. Um, plagiarism is misconduct uh, and it will be treated as such. If I detect plagiarism, I don't get a choice. I must report plagiarism. Um, I, I, in some years gone by, the subject coordinators had a bit of discretion about how they treated um, symptoms of plagiarism. Um, that discretion was taken away a few years ago and now, as I say, if, if I find plagiarism, I have to report it and it's dealt with from there. Now, the problem I have with plagiarism is that uh, I'm supposed to assess what you know. Now, if you've copied someone else's work, I don't know what you know. I know that you know how to copy, but I don't know that you know that you understand what you've just copied. So I can't, I can't assess that, and so far as I'm concerned, you don't know anything, and so you will get zero marks for it. Now, if you're in a group, the group itself overall is responsible for its work. Um, if the group submission is plagiarized, the whole group gets zero marks. So be aware that your responsibility as a group is to ensure that the work is the work of the group and not someone else. Another matter that comes up from time to time is appeals. Um, if you uh, feel that, that um, I haven't got it right, whoever, whoever marked your work has not got it right, um, you have the right of appeal. However, um, you don't just get to appeal by saying, I object and I think I should have got more marks. You have to go through the work as well. Now, if you want to appeal, you must set out reasons why you think the mark was incorrect and that must be against the marking scheme, right? There's no good saying, well, I don't like that and, and it should be marked differently. We have a marking scheme. The marking scheme is published well in advance and you're marked against that marking scheme. If you want to appeal your marks, you must argue why your marking was inaccurate or incorrect against that marking scheme. Now then, you also must argue what mark you should have got and why you should have got it, again, according to the marking scheme. So appeals are um, allowed, and if, um, if it genuinely is wrong, and I can get it wrong, um, then please do appeal. But as I say, be aware that um, you have to do more than simply shout loudly.